Hey everybody, it's Jackie with Jackie's Wreaths and Things. Today we're going to make a wreath without using any mesh and just a few floral picks and, and some ornaments. So the reason for doing this is so those of you that like ball on a budget, um, this is so that you can put less into a wreath and get more. Um, basically, I'm mixing sale items with um, up-to-date items. Um, you've seen me, how I attach, you know I do this with the ice pick, so that's why you didn't see me do this. This is a terry bow, as you know there's a tutorial available on the terry bow in the group apps. So that's why you didn't watch me make this. Now this snowman is a Raz snowman, I got him on sale, they typically sell for about 35 to 40 dollars. I got him on sale for 10 bucks. So it's these little things that you can buy that are timeless. So when you go to shop sales, you want to buy t definitely timeless items that you can use any year to create something. Um, all of this ribbon basically is mostly from last year except for this piece. So I'm using this piece to give it an up to date this season look. But the rest of it is just your basic dots with some peppermint. So that's why I did that. The other reason I wanted an ultra fluffy bow is because this is a tree topper. So because it is a tree topper, it's got a huge gap down here. Stick a hand in, and I wanted to cover that up. The evergreen base is from Walmart. I wanted it more of an oval shape, so I took it on my table and I kind of smashed it together till I got the oval shape that fit the snowman better. And that's what I did. So if you want to keep a running total about how much this wreath costs to make, um, these wreath bases I got in bulk, or you can probably, you know, these are things that you should get on sale. So if you're, you know, trying really hard to keep things affordable, these are good things to get on sale. I think these are $6 at Walmart. The snowman I paid $10 for. And we'll say, on an average, there's really probably like $6 worth of ribbon. So we're at uh, basically $22 so far. So we're going to add some ornaments into this. These ornaments were, and I'm going to stop running the total. Y'all will have to keep up with it. So we're at $16. These ornaments were $2.50 a piece. We're going to use three of them. And I guess I could keep that running total and do it after. So I'll just set these tags to the side so I can remember to total that up. So we're going to use th three of them going in the basic um, design. This is what we're going to use for our three. Now because this is an evergreen base, it's one of the cool things about evergreen bases. You don't have to necessarily wire everything in. Now because the snowman is so heavy, I did um, take my ice pick pipe cleaners and I wired him in. So what I'm going to take a look at is I want to do this in threes and I want a nice um, spacing between these. And I want to make sure that my ornaments, because I'll show you, you don't want to go left to right with your ornaments because then that doesn't look, because then you have your eyes going side to side. So a lot of times the reason that I will go like this with my ornaments is to keep your eyes going around the wreath. So I don't really want to cover up my bow. So I'm going to kind of set this one here, keep it at an angle. Set. And then it's kind of careful setting the last one because you don't want them going side by side.
and I really don't want these going necessarily up and down either. So that's how I'm going to place these because see these are actually diagonal. Diagonal. Remember I've told you in the past about the triangle. So I've got my triangle shape with my ornaments. See how it goes in the triangle? So let me spin my wreath around and now what I'm going to do is we are going to liberally add some hot glue. I'm going to pull the ornament and you can tie these in if you want to. I'll show you how to do that with this one if you don't want a hot glue. But the thing is, even if you hot just hot glue these in, because of the tie, they're still going to bobble. So you kind of would still have to tie it in to give it the security plus the hot glue. Just so it doesn't bobble around the wreath. So I'm going to tie this in. And that'll just give it ex extra security to not come out of the wreath and not just rely on the hot glue solely to hold it in. And then I'm just going to be very liberal with the amount of hot glue I'm going to put around here. Just so it doesn't come out. And I'm having to be like really careful that I'm not getting hot glue on my hand at the same time. So the hot glue, like I said, it's going to keep the ornament from bobbling around because if you don't do that, uh, it will still bobble around and it's not really secure. In the wreath. So I'll go ahead and do that again. Is that if you want to, just use a lot of hot glue and you can hot glue these straight in. And I'm kind of pushing the branches up because I want the balls to nestle into the greenery, not necessarily on top of it. So I'm pulling that through so I don't get the hot glue all over my hand again. And I'm going to shoot some hot glue around here. Just make sure that before you do this, this is exactly where, you know, you want your item. There with the ornament off the table. I'll just grab another one out of the box. I'm going to grab it again. I'm going to turn my ornament up so I can hot glue it. And then pull it in.
Always when you're designing, you want to bring your project. So, especially if you work on a table like me, you want to bring your project back to exactly how it's going to hang on the door. So, you know exactly what you're looking at. Don't ever go and place another item without bringing it back to how exactly it's going to go on the door. Because then when you place another item, you're not going to really put it in a pleasing spot if you're not careful. So I got some picks and we're not going to use all of it, but I thought that the hats and the whimsy part would be really, really cute. So that's the part that we're going to use. Now I've only got two of these, two of these picks. So this is going to be where you're going to just use um, your groups of two. So we're not even really using the full value of this pick. This pick I paid $5.50 for. So that's kind of like, since we're going to use both the hats, so we'll just use $5.50 as our guideline, even though we're not even really using half. See how this has the legs in it? So I'll save the legs for another project. So when you see picks like this, these are really good picks to get because you can get so much out of them. Because there's actually, for um, a project like this, there's actually another pick that I'll show you. Let me separate this out. There's actually another pick in here. And we're just going to use this pick down here because it's not as thick as this one. We'll use these two together to make our third pick to stay in our groups of three. So I'm going to fold that apart and cut it off. Set that to the side. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So definitely when you look at picks, um, don't just look at the price. Look at how many projects you can possibly get out of that pick. So I'm going to cut that apart. And we might save this one because I want some of that white wispy. So let's come back to our pick and see if I can pull some of that white wispy from another place. Not really. Can we get some of it from here? Yes, we can because there's actually another pick right here. So I'm going to pull that off of that one. And that way the white is consistent. So I'm going to cut one more time. And that's to keep the white consistent. So we'll probably make our pick look more like that. Just to keep that white wispy consistent so we still have this left over. So I'll set that to the side. And then I'll show you how we're going to put this one together. So because it's got the hats in it, the placement's going to kind of be critical because you don't want to put a hat like upside down. Not the end of the world if you do though, but so I'm going to kind of go here with this one and then up here to the side with this one to kind of give it 
that whimsical, wispy look. Now with this pick, we've got a couple options to attach it. If you have florist tape, you can just wrap it up. If you don't have florist tape and you make bows, you can just use that. But in this case, I'm just going to use a zip tie and bundle this all up together. To secure it because nobody's going to see this. We just want to secure it together to make that other pick and just cut that off. Now we have a couple options to where we want to put this one. We can either put it down here because it doesn't have any hat attached to it to elongate the wreath, but I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to. I've already elongated the wreath with my tails. Let me zoom out a little bit so y'all can see better what I'm talking about. There we go. Now you can see more of the project. Um, so what I'm going to do to keep my threes going, and because I've already elongated it, I want some height now. So I'm going to kind of come up here. I don't want to put it like it's sticking out of the hat because then it kind of, so I'm going to tilt it to the side a little bit. And add it into here so when I'm doing this I want to put it in far enough that it's really not gonna stick out that high and not increase my shipping cost so when I add these things, I'm really thinking about my shipping cost too and how big my wreath is. So I'm actually going to turn it really quick and see if this is still going to fit in any of the boxes that I have. And it is. But I'm still kind of not happy because how high that sticks up. It's a little bit too whimsical. So I want to come down a little bit further with it. So I'm going to come down further into the hat. It's just a little bit too high still. So I'm going to come down beside the hat and see if I can shorten it up just a bit. So to kind of compensate for that, I'm going to tilt these out a little bit to make them wisp out. And I'm still not happy with it. Still not happy. I think it's going to go down by the bow, y'all. But I'm going to go ahead and secure these because I like exactly where they're at. Make sure that when you put items like this in that you're getting a ton of your um, greenery because, you know, otherwise they're really not going to stay. think we are going to end up yeah we're going to end up down here underneath the bow and that's going to be okay I'm going to cut this off one more time so I don't have so much pick sticking down into my wreath And I'm putting a lot of hot glue on to make sure all the little pieces, even though they're zip tied in, um, don't come out. So 
So that actually adds some whimsy down here into the bow as well. So we already have quite a bit of stripes, but I really wanted to add um, some more stuff sticking out. So I've got some candy canes. I paid $2.75 for these so you can break the price apart. But what we'll just do is for the sake of it, even, even though I, I might use them all, I might use all five of them. Um, you know, staying in our grouping of odd numbers, you can do three, five. So there's five of these. So we might just use them all throughout. So I'll set those to the side. So when I use um, candy canes, I don't like them all to go the same direction. So what I'll do is I will rotate how they stick out of the wreath. So I'll rotate them between this way and that way as I go. So I am going to use all of them. <clears throat> Uh, just because it, to me, really adds a uh, another cute little element to the wreath. And the candy cane, we can stick upside down. So the one thing I'm wanting to do with the candy canes is I want to make sure that they're consistent on basically how far they're sticking out of the wreath. And the reason that I'm doing that is once again to continue to keep your eye traveling around your project. So I'm kind of taking a look, see what's going on, making sure that I have them all placed where I believe that I want them to go. So I'm kind of looking and I'll tell y'all exactly what I'm looking at at this moment. I am looking that I have pretty well filled this side up. I've put several of my larger groupings over here on this side. I've got the two ornaments and I've got the one. So now I've put three candy canes over here and just two. So I'm kind of leaving this side empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull this one out. And I'm going to take a better look as to how I can incorporate this one over here. Possibly space these out just a little bit further to incorporate them all. See, that one's sticking out too far, so let me move it. And readjust. So now I have a more pleasant grouping, and I've added more to this side. So now that I've got them exactly where I want them, 
I'm going to cut the stem off just a little bit because I'm not going to slide them in. I want to kind of slide, slide them at an angle, so I'm going to cut the stem off a bit because I don't want it scratching a door. And then I'm not going to just glue the stem. I'm going to glue the base of the candy cane to really grab hold of the evergreen. In case y'all are wondering, I do have a bigger glue gun. I'm just trying to use up all my mini sticks that I have. So I don't want to put that directly over the hat. I don't want it in the center. So one of the other reasons I'm doing this without mesh is to give y'all a better diversity of projects that you can do without using mesh. Because sometimes you have supplies sitting around, but you may not have like the right color mesh. So holding on to our price tags over there, I'm going to come back to my center and we have a ton of red and white, as you can see in our project. So now it's time to break that up. So one of the best ways to break up the red and white, and then we have a ton of stripe and then we have some dots. So one of the best ways to break that up is with a ribbon. So once again, not using the mesh, I'm going to take a look and I'm going to see where the biggest gaps are on my wreath. And I'm going to use some hand bows to break that monotony up. So to keep it going traditional, you can either use some of the ribbons that were in your bow and you actually don't have to. So if you really wanted to use a different ribbon, now you would because we're going to do like three hand bows so to your eye that might look like four of them so if you don't want um your eye to make it look like there's four of them you know you can change your ribbons as long as it's in christmas colors also if you don't want to continue using um uh, if you don't want to use ribbon, well, then you need to get a couple of other big elements. So here's, you can, and I would stay away from any swirls or stripes at this point. So for the big elements, we still have quite a few, you know, we got some big spaces. So I would use possibly a poinsettia. Now, one of the reasons that I'm trying not to use the poinsettia in the project is because some of these poinsettias can actually be pretty pricey. 
So that's why I didn't really want to use them. If you're going to have to use something like this, you might as well just use mesh to fill the gap. Because poinsettias, they typically, like, they're on an average. Poinsettias are pretty expensive. They're usually about $6.50 a piece. So that's why I didn't really want to use these. But I'm going to go ahead and cut those off so I'm not storing that stem. So this is an option if you don't want to make some hand bows. Another option. Let's grab some goodies. I got more goodies, y'all. <laughs> is possibly some more big candy pieces. So now we can go in groups of two if you want to add some really big candy pieces. These I got on sale for $4.99. And $4.99, I got them for $2.50 a piece. So if you really wanted to go in and add some big candy pieces, and we may do this because that looks a little bit more fun to me to really fill those gaps. It's another good way to do it. And I think that's what we're going to do. Because now that I put them in there, I kind of really like the way they look, y'all. <laughs> We might just use the two, it looks like. Because I don't like the way the third one looks. But I do like the two. So I think we'll just use the two. So once again, let's cut some stuff off here. I'm going to cut the hanger off. Set that aside and keep track of. And then this is a wooden stick. So I'm going to cut quite a bit of that off. Now, don't pull this out, out because these are made of styrofoam. You're just really going to want to cut this down as far as you can. Almost threw it away, y'all. Trying to keep track of the price and cost we got in this wreath. So I can tell you how I would price this particular wreath. All right. So the bow's actually irrelevant because I'm fixing to cram it in there. So I'm not going to stress about pulling it out. All right, so to add these, it's going to take a little bit more glue, a little bit more patience, because we don't just have to glue the stick. We really need to add some glue to the base. And this is where a bigger glue gun would come in handy because you would be gluing faster than I am with more glue. So I'm really being liberal with the glue and I'm going to tuck this in here. Be very careful with your stems and stuff, y'all, that you're not um, totally going through your wreath base. And I accidentally covered that up. That's not what we wanted. I wanted it more right here. And you're not going through your wreath base to... Um, So it won't scratch the door. 
So always when you're done with projects like this, double check and make sure that you didn't um, go down. And this would be actually a good project to like maybe put a backing on it just to be safe, better safe than sorry. So I'm kind of wanting these to stick out kind of even. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm wanting them to stick out even past the greenery. And we may put this third one in yet. I'm going to take another look, y'all. No. Still no. Still too much. Okay. So now that I've done that, we still have a kind of a gap. And now we're ready to fill that. And I'm going to do that with the ribbon. The good thing about these evergreen bases is you don't really, you can grab if you want to. You can use a pipe cleaner and tie it in if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. I also want to use some more of the, um, more of the solid red. I want to add the green, but I want some more solid to break up the stripe just a little bit. Or this would be the point in which you can pull. I'll show y'all that. Let me show y'all that. If you really wanted to pull a new ribbon in, how you would do that. So I'm wanting something that's a little, that's more solid green to it. Or more of a solid red. So what I'm going to do is we called these in the past the dragonfly bow. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to kind of guess how long I want my tail to be. Typically, usually I end up making it about seven, six to seven inches is what I end up making my tail. Then I make my loop. I kind of eyeball that and it usually ends up being five to six inches. So I'm going to make a hand bow and then what I do is I'm going to double check and make sure my loops are the same and I want these to be over, I want these to be over exaggerated in size. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for. And then I'm for this particular bow, I want my loops to be the same size. And I think what we're just going to do with this one is we're just going to make a three loop bow because it's kind of a little bit more pleasing to the eye in this case. And then we're going to go to what our better part of the vacant areas are. So I'm going to start right here. 
And then I'm going to use the evergreen to tie it in. Because evergreen pops up everywhere else in this wreath. So we want to continue to have it like popping up and showing through even in our bow. Nip, I want the other loop. We're going to do the other loop, y'all. I thought three would be just fine, but I want that other loop. The other reason I'm putting these loops so big is because when you tie this in, you're going to tie it in pretty far to the base. And so it's really tight and secure. And then always pull your ties back and everything to the way they were. Pull that up above my bow. I'm going to curl my ends down a bit. Now there's nothing up here at the hat, so this is where I'm going to put my second one. So we're going to make one more. Everything's going to be about the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and measure just to kind of make sure that I'm consistent on my sizes of loops and everything. So I'm doing about six inch loops. I want them all the same size. So you can kind of just pull on your loops. And then before I cut, that way I'm not wasting ribbon, I will go ahead and use the greenery to tie it in. And like I said, I'm really tying it in tight and I'm going to leave my greenery up. And I am the one that will fight with ribbon and everything to get it to lay exactly how I want it to. So I kind of don't want it all bunched up, so that's why I'm kind of fighting with how it's laying and everything. It's kind of trying to bunch up on me. I'm going to pull some underneath the hat. And around and then we're going to add one more. So the last one that I want to add, I am basically, I think I'm going to put it let me turn my project back to center and make sure that I'm not going directly across so I need to go up here quite a bit. So 
So this one is, so basically what I'm looking at, this one is right here. That's the center of this bow. So that's what I'm looking at is the center of this bow. So I either need to go pretty far up here or pretty far down here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make my bow. And then I'm going to, before I tie it in, I'm going to place it in a couple places. Just to the side where I wanted it. So it really needs to be so basically it's right here on the other side so I don't want to do that I either need to come down with it or up here with it so I think I'm gonna go right next to the hat So I'm going to come up with it. So this is a bigger branch. I'm kind of pushing it out of the way to find smaller branches that will tie better. Set that branch back. So notice how I really pull my loops apart and round them out. And then I'm really putting them where I want them to sit. And actually if you manipulate your greenery around that helps also. So move your greenery around if you need to to get your bow to sit how you want it to because like I said I want to make it look like it's coming out of the greenery um, I don't want it to look like it's um, on top of it so this is kind of where we're at so I'm going to kind of double check um, the secureness this one needs a little bit more hot glue so I'm just going to grab a hot glue stick And really get in there and then if I have to what I'll do is I push green right up against it and I'll hold it and I kind of think now that I've done this we've already invested the money in it so now that I've done this, I think I want I want some more wisps of whimsy. So I'm just going to pull the red out. That way, these two picks stay intact. For a future project. So I'm going to cut that off. Here I go separating out again to make sure I just get the red. And 
I'll do the same thing with this pick. Make sure I pull all the red and then cut that off. We don't need all that stick, so I'm going to cut it off. And this might still be too long. And it is. I want whipsy. I want some a little bit more wispy. And these pieces are a little bit, they're just a little bit too long for this project. Because I feel like we need, we really need something right here. Let me bring my project back to center and take a better look. No, we're good. We're good, actually. So the only thing left to do is like really put the greenery, pull it out, and straighten it up. So that the wreath has a consistent shape. The snowman, so I wanted the snow to show through. So with the snow and everything, so that's, this is a way that you can make a wreath, no mesh. So the total for this project is, this was $10. We get $6 for the bow. That's 16. The base was, I think, um, $6 if you don't get it on sale. So that was 22. We have three ornaments. Um, in the project that was 17 um 1950 i really need a calculator let's get me a calculator so we were at 1950 plus 550 and then i got these on sale i paid half off so that was five dollars and then the Candy canes, I paid $275 for those. So I have $32.75 in this wreath that I'm going to sell for $125. So always make sure that you are shopping those Christmas sales for your good staple items that you can use the next season. Hope y'all enjoy this tutorial. Bye y'all.